Hello everyone, my name is Casey Shervinka. I'm a digital technology professional and Prod Ops SME here at Apache Corporation with nearly 20 years of experience in the oil and gas industry. I'm here to talk to you today about an industry-wide challenge and how we are overcoming it with the help of Esri. Early last year, the world as we knew it began to change. Our country commenced into going into lockdown in an effort to combat the spread of the COVID-19 virus. Apache in turn began immediately requiring mandatory quarantines for employees that have been potentially exposed to the virus. This quickly escalated into a shortage from of frontline personnel, placing a strain on our ability to cover the inspections and service of our assets. In addition to that strain, the drop in commodity prices in the height of the pandemic prevented our ability to attribute more resources to support our field assets. This became our challenge. How can we responsibly cover our field operations? How do we safeguard our processes to ensure that our asset gets the attention it needs? What tools do we already have that can be used to solve this challenge? Interproject Value Directed Pumping. With joint collaboration between our GIS, development, infrastructure, and production operation teams, we created a project called Value Directed Pumping. Our core concept was to distribute a specific list of assets, now called stops, to every operator daily, identifying the key stops that need to be visited. These stops are ranked based on a comprehensive set of business rules regarding their respective risk levels, production potential, and inherent safety concerns. That ranking of assets would then be sent to, processed, and tracked by Esri Systems, returning an optimized list based on time, priority, and value that is distributed to the field. My friend and colleague Carlos Sosa is now zealously waiting to tell you how we did just that. Carlos? Thank you, Casey. Hi, my name is Carlos Sosa and I am the GIS Platform Supervisor at Apache Corporation. Thank you for joining us today. I want to share with you our story on how we use the real-time GIS and routing capabilities of the RGIS platforms in the BDP project. We had mainly two requirements for this project. The first was to provide an automated way of monitoring the field activity. And the second requirement was to create an, an optimal daily route for pumpers based on values provided by BDP prioritization service. With these requirements in mind, we came up with the following solution. This diagram shows the BDP GIS components. There are mainly three high-level components, data, GIS platform, and microservices. The data sources we, we use are the facility geofences, the vehicle tracking, and the Apache road network. Our production RGS platform is on 1061 on a standard availability configuration. We specifically use the RGIS real-time components for this project. If you're not familiar, that is RGIS Enterprise plus GeoBen Server plus Spatial Temporal Data Store. The microservices are REST web services exposed as integration points for BDP. Let's talk about how the microservices work. The field activity microservices are a collection of feature services that contains all the activity in the field in real time. The activity is recorded using the facility geofences as geographic boundaries, the purple circle in, the, in this illustration. When a vehicle enters the boundary or geofence, there is an event recorded that is called enter event. Then when the vehicle exits the boundary, there is another event recorded that is called the exit event. The duration on site can be calculated using deltas in these two events. The feature services are exposed as REST APIs for integration with BDP. The routing microservices gets the list of facilities to be visited for the day from, from the BDP prioritization module. It uses the Vehicle Routing Problem Analysis, or BRP, to resolve optimal route for each vehicle using Apache Road Network. Apache Road Network is built by using Street Premium plus Apache Lease Roads this microservice is exposed as geoprocessing service using REST API for integration with BDP. The BDP concept was running as a pilot for one area in the field for months before COVID. With all the knowledge we acquired during this time, we were able to identify the challenges to move to the next big step. Taking the pilot to production, or as the production efficiency team refers, industrialization of BDP. In other words, making BDP an enterprise solution. Next, I will talk about the challenges that we discover on each of these components. The data challenges. 
the data challenges we discover, how do we go from 800 geofences to more than 16,000 without hiring an army of analysts? Or how do we go from 200 to almost 3,000 custom roads? During the pilot, we were editing roads in an orthodox way, and this was causing road network failures. Also, StreetMap Premium updates merging was a little painful. We really needed a way to streamline the editing process. The solution, the data analytics team created a module called Zybag, which stands for Satellite Imagery Based Auto Geofencing. This module captures satellite imagery data and runs a series of computer vision algorithms to build geofence polygons around target locations based on their visual attributes. The output of this module is GeoJSON polygons, which are then ingested by FME tool to create polygons features on the enterprise geo database. Once the geofences polygons are created, the remote operation center operators can manually tweak to correct specs using an editable web map. Now creating new roads. In order to find these missing roads in the network, we simulated all field routes using related facility locations at stops with StreetMap Premium. If any of the facilities fail to route, more likely there are no roads connecting that location with the road network. If that is the case, we need to create a new custom road to reach that location. All custom roads are managed into Apache List Road Geo Database. Streamlining the editing process. We engage Esri Consulting Services to get best practices for editing our, our own Apache Road Network. Following the recommendations, we have streamlined the editing process and now it's more efficient to create additional custom list roads. Our custom roads are now close to 3,000. This diagram shows the editing workflow for Apache Road Network. On the left side, we have the RGS StreetMap Premium subscription, which is quarterly delivered via USB drive. Apache list road, where we'll keep all our custom roads that later will be merged with StreetMap Premium. Apache Roadblox is where we keep areas we want to exclude from routing. This can be hazardous roads, private roads, and potentially this can be dur uh, during flood um, events. GIS platform challenges. In the GIS platform, we found the following problems. The number of resources we used for pilot was taking the platform almost to full capacity. We had some stability issues with other vehicle tracking input connector that read from GeoTab. We discover missing data points and often will not read the service properly. We found stabilization issues on the platform on the real-time GIS components, specifically with GeoEvent Server. Our GIS platform was targeting office hours and not really fuel operation hours. The solution? In order to address the capacity issue in our GIS platform, we engage Esri Solution Architect to help us with assessment of capacity and explore the high availability configuration option. After working session with Esri Architect, we concluded we needed to stand up a parallel environment with latest 10.8.1 version of on HA with resource size based on, look, on load calculations. We solved the stabilization issue on the vehicle tracking by replacing our custom GeoTap net proxy service with Esri GeoTap connector. Esri GeoTap connector is configurable, supported by Esri, and the developer is very responsive. In addition to HA configuration, we work with IT infrastructure team to create a special RGIS IT maintenance window for patching, rebooting in the proper order. This schedule doesn't affect the field data collection hours. We also set up RGIS monitor and other custom Python scripts to monitor services during field operation hours that will send notifications in case of issues. This is how the new Apache real-time GIS platform typical, in typical RGIS high availability configuration. All servers have redundancy and the load balancer will reroute incoming requests if one of the server is down. Microservices challenge, the routing microservice. The original routing services was running on schedule every day, one route at a time. The integration with BDP was through CSB files mainly. It was taking about 10 minutes to execute a route. This approach was definitely not scalable. The solution, we made design changes to routing service by migrating from on schedule to on demand using a geoprocessing service. The geoprocessing service allows you to use JSON to integrate instead of CSV files. We also perform some enhancements on the exception management, login, and the logic to read and write data. On the other, one of the other changes that speed up the routing was the, to host 
the raw network file geodatabase locally in the server instead of a network folder. All the changes, the total routing exception time went down from 10 minutes to about a minute. In conclusion, we have used RGIS technology to provide field operation with a robust set of microservices that are easy to support and easy to integrate with, with our value-directed pumping project. Thanks for listening, and I hope this information was useful. Now back to you, Casey. Thank you. Thanks, Carlos. Value-directed pumping based on the integrated technologies has yielded better results than we could have ever expected. To date, we can report that our operators are able to cover over 200% greater area of responsibility, helping us cover those stops when resources are low. Of the stops they need to make for the day, they can now spend 40% more time on location doing what matters most, uh, preventive maintenance work, tackling work projects, and production optimization. Even more remarkably, we've seen over a 30% reduction in drive time. Driving, which is our most dangerous thing we do day to day. The value gained from just one life saved from a driving incident is priceless. This project is still young and constantly evolving. Using the latest technologies, complex thinking, and partnering with companies like Esri, we expect much more value to come. Thank you.